Welcome to episode 98 of A2Z Sports Talk. It's been a busy week in the NFL with all the free agent signings, with all the trades that have been happening. We covered a lot on Monday and we have so many more to cover today. It's also been a very busy week in college basketball where all these teams are either making their season or breaking their season with these conference tournaments. We're going to cover some NFL and some college basketball today. As always, if you were listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe over there. We'd really appreciate it. If you were listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure to rate and follow over there as well. You can follow us on all, all social media at A2Z underscore sports underscore talk, TikTok, X, Instagram, all that great stuff. Let's start in the NFL, though, where we talked about on Monday all these different deals that have been going down. I think it's really going to be not only a very exciting next season, I'm already very excited for it. I think it's going to be a very different look for the entire league. So since Monday, there has been so much that has happened. We're going to start with King Henry joining the Ravens. Um, not only is this arguably the biggest move. Now, King Henry is not um, the same Derrick Henry that he was a few years ago. He's older, but he's still an elite top five running back in the league. My initial thought is this is easily the best running back quarterback duo in the league. Now, running backs aren't aren't as a um, you know big vocal, focal point of people's offenses nowadays. Um, it's more the explosive receivers. Um, but with Lamar's running ability and Derrick Henry's running ability, they can do so many different cool things with them. Zay Flowers, throw him in that mix and just kind of mesh them around. I, I think it could be really fun to watch. And it's a, it's a move by the Ravens that are showing um, their fan base and the rest of the league, they're, they're for real. Like they, they, These last couple of years, um, they've been very successful, but they've missed that like superstar besides Lamar Jackson on, on that offense. And Mark Andrews is a great tight end, and I guess he could kind of fall in that um, all-star caliber player. But they needed somebody else to really help, and Zay Flowers is young. He's going to continue to improve, but you're talking about Odell Beckham Jr. and like guys like that that were kind of just there, right? So Derrick Henry to the Ravens uh, kind of caught me off guard, to be honest, but I absolutely love that move. Um, going to the defensive side of the ball, Bobby Wagner joined the Washington Commanders this week. Now, Bobby was in Seattle for the longest time. He went to L.A. for a year. He went back to Seattle. He's older now, but people forget, man, this guy can still get after. He led the whole NFL in tackles last year. That's a great pickup by the Commanders. They got Austin Eckler. We talked about that on Monday. They traded Sam Howell today to Seattle. That opens up a whole quarterback spot that I think they're going to use with, with that number three pick in the draft that they have. They did sign Marcus Mariota. I don't think that's what they're going to go route-wise uh, as their starter this year. But you get Eckler. You get a young, stud quarterback in the draft here. We, we've talked about how many uh, prospects there are available this year. So, I like the I like the direction the Commanders are going. Um, Joe Mixon to the Houston Texans is another move that has to be up there with the best moves of this offseason. You're talking about a Texans team that not only exceeded expectations last year, going ten and seven. You have an offense now with C.J. Stroud, Joe Mixon, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Noah Brown had a couple of explosive games last year, and Dalton Schultz. That is a top five offense in the NFL. These are young guys that are going to literally be with each other for a long, long time, hopefully healthy and everything works out. This is something to be so excited for if you're Houston. When you drafted CJ Stroud in the draft last year, you had a super high expectations. You thought it might take some growing time and then they're going to figure it out. He came in and exploded right off the scene. Nico Collins was great. He's a young receiver. Tank Dell, the rookie receiver, went off. Now you add Joe Mixon, so you can't just rely defensively. You can't really just scheme against their pass game. You have to be prepared for Joe Mixon as well. Great move by the Texans. Patrick Queen to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I wrote down here, their mean defense gets meaner. You're talking about TJ Watt on one side and Patrick Queen on the other. Cam Hayward in the middle. That is a tremendous defense that just got better. 
Um, and he he really fits that that division. Obviously, he's been playing with the Ravens, um, so he fits that rivalry. It just it's a great move by the Steelers, in my opinion. Calvin Ridley to the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> it, 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 I'm going to talk about a few offenses here uh, when we go over the NFL here um, between the Texans offense I just mentioned, and we're going to cover the Bears in a little bit. This is one of those other offenses I really want to cover because they have done so well this offseason, in my opinion. You got Will Levis as your starting quarterback next year. Now, they did sign Mason Rudolph. He's not going to be their starter. Will Levis is that guy uh, for them. You got Tony Pollard. They signed this offseason earlier this week. You got DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley. That's a powerful one-two duo. Now, I see, I've seen some posts say they're old, they're washed, all that. I'm not buying it. These two guys can really get after it, and I think that's too reliable, if healthy, and not gambling. Those are too reliable um, wide receivers that Will Levis can really use, and I love that they they put these veteran receivers around him because as a young quarterback, you need to have trust in your guys, and these guys have, have been there and done that. So I think it's a great move uh, for the Titans. I really like what they've done. They've really lacked some offensive firepower these last few years. It's been Derrick Henry and nobody else, the whole Ryan Tannehill era and all that. So it's a whole new kind of turning of the page for the Titans, and I like the direction they're going. They also get a top 10 pick in the draft. I'm sure they'll use that on some kind of offensive line uh, help there, but I really like what the Titans are doing. Um, Curtis Samuel to the Bills is one of the most underrated moves of the week so far this offseason. He's not a big name receiver, right? Like for Washington, he was more of their wide receiver three behind behind uh, Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin. He's going to obviously be behind Stephon Diggs. They lose Gabe Davis. Curtis Samuel just fits that offense, man. You can put him in the run game. You can put him in the pass game. You can put him in different sets. Josh Allen and him, I think, are going to have a tremendous connection. He's super explosive and dynamic. Um, I think it's just a great fit. Great fit, not only with Allen, but that whole offensive scheme. Love Curtis Samuel to the Bills. The big news today. The big the big news today is Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen to the Bears for a fourth round pick. The Chargers received a fourth round pick for Keenan Allen. I'm going to say this one more time for everybody out there. Keenan Allen to the Bears. The Chargers got a fourth round pick. This is a top 15 receiver. When healthy, he has had some injury issues. When healthy, Keenan Allen's a top 15 receiver in the league. And the Chargers got a fifth, got a fourth round pick for this guy. I don't know what the Chargers are doing this offseason. You, you get hardball, it's a great move. But think about what what think about what the Chargers have done this week. You obviously have a top 10 quarterback in Justin Herbert. You lose Austin Eckler to the Commanders. You lose Keenan Allen to the Bears. And today they release to Mike Williams, who's going to be picked up very soon. Those are your three offensive weapons. Now you have Quentin Johnson they had, they signed or they uh, drafted last year. But we're talking three elite, elite playmakers that are gone. So it's really interesting to see what direction they're going. Flipping it to the Chicago Bears side, you got Justin Fields. Please stay with Justin Fields. Don't go the Caleb, Caleb Williams route. Just stay with Justin Fields. DeAndre Swift was just signed there. You got Keenan Allen, you got DJ Moore, and you got Cole Komet. That is a great offense around Justin Fields. You finally have weapons around him. There is no reason to move on from Justin Fields at all because this is the first time you can actually judge him for who he is, right? You can judge him for the talent that's around him. In the past couple of years, people have been getting on him, but there's been no talent around him. This year, if he somehow struggles and cannot compete and cannot win with these pieces, if they're healthy around him, then we can judge Justin Fields based off that. But as of right now, we cannot base Justin Fields what we think of him to be these last couple of years. It's got to be with these stars around him, and they finally have those stars around him. So I'm excited for the Chicago Bears this year. I really am. The last deal here is Marquise Hollywood Brown. Uh, and I hate saying this, but to the Kansas City Chiefs. If you're new here, I am not a Chiefs fan, um, but I, I do believe this is a great move for them. Now, they lacked <laughs> – I mean, they won the Super Bowl, but I was going to say they lacked the wide receiver room uh, last year. Um, Rice was a great adi- or a, a great um, kind of surprise for them. He, he's really, uh, really 
um, improved and developed throughout the year and became a really, really good receiver for them. And obviously Kelsey's getting a little older here, but uh, he's still great. But Marquise Hollywood Brown is such a dynamic, explosive receiver, and you can use him in so many different ways. And that's what the Chiefs are so good at is using guys in so many different ways. And he just fits that. Like I could see so many like Tyree kill type movements um, that they're going to use him in. Uh, this upcoming year. So I do love that move for the chiefs as, as much as it pains me to say, but that that's going to wrap it up for the NFL here. Um, I, I think this upcoming year is going to be so fun because there's so much change. There's so much change. And I think that's very exciting for the league. It can get stale uh, at, at times. And with all these different uh, moving players and moving pieces and these, these teams have, that have been bad for so long that are, that are, you know, improving. I mean, we're talking about the Texans, the Titans, the Jaguars, the Colts. It's a toss up, right? Like I, right now I'd probably lean the Texans again, but we're talking about Trevor Lawrence and CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson and Will Levis with that offense. I mean, that division's, that division's a lot of fun. And then you're talking about, um, you know, the commanders are improving. Can they make some noise depending on what quarterback they draft uh, in, in, the, in the draft here? Um, the Ravens looking to continue it going. Like, there's there's a lot to be excited for this upcoming year. We have a long offseason. This is just week one of the offseason with all the signings and all that. So uh, very, very exciting. Moving on to college basketball. Now, Today is going to be kind of light on the college basketball talk only because I really, you know, with all these conference tournaments going on, I really want to focus on two teams that I, that have really been in my mind a lot. Um, I do want to tell you guys though, next episode. So next on, on next episode, which is on Monday, episode 99, this will be after selection Sunday. So I will be giving you guys my, my three teams to watch in the tournament. Now, we're not going to have a normal episode next Friday um, because that is during March Madness. And I want to get that bracket out before then. So I will have an episode out on Wednesday that will be just bracketology type talk and uh, kind of going through every region and all that. So today is just focusing on two teams. Team number one, can Kansas turn it around? Now, they are four and six in their last 10 games. They lost in their first round matchup against Cincinnati last night by 20. Now, they were without McCuller and they were without Dickinson. Both of those guys will be back. But is it too late for Kansas? Is it too late for Kansas? I think they can. I I think those guys being veteran guys, not just freshmen, they can kind of hop in after missing some time and then be okay. Um, I am a little worried. I mean, all year long. I've I've told some people this. I thought UConn and Kansas were the two teams that I had most confidence in. This last stretch kind of worried me. Now this is a Big Twelve where literally every every single night anybody can win type type of deal. We've seen that with Kansas State recently. Unless you're West Virginia or Oklahoma Oklahoma State, every team can compete, right? Um, but four and six in the last ten, they're going to have to really click. And now I, I'm. Very interested to see what the committee thinks about seeding wise. Um, they have slid a lot though from that potential two seed to a four, five, probably a four seed is where they're going to end up sitting. Um, but it's very interesting to see what the committee thinks about them. I think Kansas has elite eight potential when when they're clicking, and I think they can get these pieces to click. Um, now McCuller has been dealing with more injuries than Hunter Dickinson has, uh, but those two guys are their offense, right? Those two guys need to be there. Now they're going to have, have to have guys like Timberlake hit shots to be able to space the floor in the tournament. Uh, but these are their two guys. They're going to do a lot of their offense and run them, run, run their offense through. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's very, they're the team that intrigues me possibly more than anyone um, just because of how they've ended their season. Can they turn it around it is, is, is the big question here. Um, and, and I think, like I said, I, I think they can make an elite eight, um, but I can also see them losing in the round of 32. I don't see them. If they're a four seed playing a 13 seed, depending on who that 13 seed is, because there's a couple out there. I've already kept an eye on that. will get go over next Monday. Um, 
I don't see them losing that first round, but that second round matchup in the round of 32, I could see them getting knocked out. I really could. Or I could see them getting hot, clicking, making a Elite Eight or Final Four. It's really one way or the other. It's it's very intriguing and going to be very uh, interesting to keep keep our keep our eyes on them. Uh, the other team is Creighton. Now, Creighton is a team I've been very high on all year. They don't have a lot of depth. But they have a lot of firepower in that in that starting lineup that have that have been in the tournament has had had uh, experience and success in, in the tournament. So what is Creighton's ceiling? Creighton's ceiling for me is a Final Four team. With that being said, they lost to Providence um, by eight or nine, and Providence is just that team that always throughout the year they've had a couple great years where they've even been ranked. But they're just always there. It, it just seems like they're always upsetting people. They're always competitive. And uh, so I, I don't know how much to really put into that loss for Creighton. I'm not I'm not weighing a whole lot into it. Uh, I still think this Creighton team can make a final four and uh, and really make some noise. Now, I don't th- I don't I wouldn't put them in that championship contender type of category. And like like I said, next week, we're going to go over all that type of stuff. Uh, but the, I, I really do think there is a tier. There's tiers to this. I think UConn and Houston are in their own tier, and then right under that is probably the Purdue's and the Arizonas and the Tennessees stuff like that. But uh, I think Creighton uh, is one of those sneaky teams that can make a Final Four. Uh, the depth kind of worries me a little bit, uh, but that is my ceiling for Creighton. Is a Final Four team um, that, in my opinion, depending on what region they're at, should be in the Sweet Sixteen pretty easily. Um, but that is going to wrap it up for episode 98, kind of a shorter episode for this one, but next week is going to be jam packed, jam packed, um, with, with college basketball talk, probably both episodes just talk about college basketball unless, and men's and women's, unless something crazy happens in the NFL, which is very possible or something happens in, in the, in, in the NBA now, baseball wise, um, it's hard to f- kind of find time to fit that in right now. So what we're doing is right now I'm going over and I'm posting on social media, on Instagram and on TikTok and on X actually, uh, as well. I am posting my top 10 players at, at each position before the season starts. We've already gone through starting pitchers, relief pitchers, and first baseman catchers are next. So, uh, make sure to go follow over there at a two Z sports talk on Instagram, X, TikTok. We really appreciate that. Um, but I will see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Be ready for a lot of college basketball talk next week. A lot of conference championships this weekend. So make sure to uh, tune in to all of those. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys on Monday. Thank you guys so much for being here and, uh, have a great weekend.